Oh, what happened? Well, you have a concussion. Did I at least make the big play? Blue, left. <laughs> 17. <laughs> Set, hut, hut. Yeah, sure. Oh, sweet. But what now? Am I gonna get dementia? Alzheimer's? Parkinson's? Lazy brain? Haunted noggin? Oh my gosh, will I get drafted by a perpetually non-competitive NFL team? Whoa, slow down there, Billy. The vast majority of concussions have no long-term effects. My name's not- In fact, despite stereotypes, retired yeah. NFL players actually tend to be healthier than the general population, even if they've yeah. suffered head injuries. Odds are, before you know it, you'll be back out there, chucking picks all over the field. Okay, well maybe it's because I got hit on the head, but now I have no idea what a concussion even is? Can anybody really know something? Do we even really know each other? Is any of us anything more than packed together atoms floating aimlessly through a meaningless void? Huh? Uh, what I mean is that there's no single universally accepted definition of a concussion. A concussion occurs as a result of a hit to the head, neck, or body, but beyond that, uh... But we do know this, Timmy. You don't have to be knocked unconscious to suffer a concussion. In fact, fewer than 10% of people who suffer concussions black out. You might not even realize you've been concussed until symptoms emerge, which is why blows to the neck or body that cause your head to move violently need to be taken seriously. So you can't, like, put me in a big concussion checking machine? No, analyzing a teenager or young adult in an MRI or CT machine mostly only reveals entire segments of the brain dedicated to memes, novelty dance crazes, and surprisingly poignant films about anthropomorphic teddy bears. He's just so kind. Concussions affect the brain's chemistry, so expecting to see it in a scan would be like giving you an MRI to find out why you failed your math test. But what about CT? You know, a chronic termite esophagus. That's chronic traumatic encephalopathy, Jimmy. Seriously, my name is- CTE appears associated to both the frequency and severity of head trauma, but because CTE manifests deep in the folds of the brain, it can only be diagnosed after death. Diagnosing someone with CTE while they're alive is just guesswork, and that can lead to harmful misassumptions. In fact, studies of athletes who suffered as many as three or more concussions found no increase in long-term health problems. What is this, big concussion propaganda? Don't get me wrong, Lenny. Concussions are serious, but it's most important to properly treat concussions in the short term. An inappropriate treatment or a complete lack of treatment is by far the greatest risk to your health. So my life isn't doomed just because I had a concussion? No, don't worry. Statistically, you'll reach old age and die a slow, painful death from something completely unrelated. Or maybe you'll get hit by another bigger bus tomorrow. Who knows? Well, that is a load off my concussed mind. Concussions can manifest in all sorts of different ways, including headaches, memory problems, mood swings, blurred vision, memory problems, nausea, the laying of eggs, restless sleep, balance issues, sensitivity to light and sound, memory problems, trouble concentrating, and of course, memory problems. Did you say the laying of eggs? I always throw that one in to make sure patients are paying attention. Well, at least I don't have to worry about memory problems. Everyone reacts to a concussion differently, which means every treatment plan will be unique. The brain is really, really complicated, so you can't just take a magical concussion pill. But if your concussion gives you a headache, then we'll treat the headache. If your neck hurts, then we'll start there. If you can't stop laying eggs, certain pungent creams can help. It's important to consult with your doctor and form a personalized treatment plan instead of just Googling concussion treatments and winding up on a website with articles about how Wi-Fi was invented by scheming communists. I thought I was just supposed to like lie down a lot. Nope. In fact, you should continue to receive as much physical and mental stimulation as you're comfortable with under the direction of a healthcare professional, such as your athletic trainer. But my dad said- Oh, the same man who thinks you can't lay eggs? Wait, I thought you said you made that up. There's a long-standing myth that concussion victims need to be shut away in a dark, silent room like a kidnapped Disney princess. And you should avoid any activity that makes you uncomfortable, and you absolutely shouldn't get right back on the football field. But complete isolation isn't good for your health either. Following a brief rest period of no more than just a few days, we want you participating in light physical activity under a healthcare provider's guidance. We want you to get back to your normal routine as quickly as possible. Too much rest may actually be problematic. Oh, and continue to take any medication you're on, such as for your ADHD. Despite what your weird uncle might claim, stopping your medication to treat your concussion is like draining all your car's oil before you change its tires. Wow, so it sounds like getting hit on the head is no big deal. Can I use concussions to get out of English class? Shakespeare is hard. Please don't misuse my medicinal truncheon, Brady. We shouldn't overreact to concussions, but we shouldn't take unnecessary risks either. Well, thanks a lot. Now I'm nervous again. 
Should I play a safer sport? Croquet players make millions in endorsements, right? <laughs> Maybe in England, but you'd be surprised by what sports are the most concussion prone. Football players get all the headlines, but women's hockey has a comparable risk and soccer is up there too. Women in general have a higher concussion risk, which is why it's important to monitor for symptoms and take blows to the head seriously, no matter what you're doing. Maybe I should just quit sports entirely and pursue my dream of becoming the world's tallest man. Please don't do that either for several reasons. While millions of Americans play sports every day, only somewhere between 20 to 30% of concussions come from athletics. You could suffer a concussion by falling down the stairs, having a car crash, a workplace accident, by being attacked on the street. It could happen anywhere, at any time. But that's no excuse to hide from life. A sedentary lifestyle is linked to obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, and just being really sad, among other serious health problems. Athletics are a valuable source of exercise and socialization in a world where we sit on our butts all day. Even your school's smartest weebs could benefit from exercise. Well, great. Then I'm going to get back out there and win the big game. Well, no, you're not, Johnny. It can take several days for concussion symptoms to emerge, so you can't just go back out there after you get your head knocked around, no matter what your pushy coach or bloodthirsty mom says. Returning to play while concussed can make a temporary health issue much worse, even if you feel fine in the moment. The majority of athletes will take from a few days to a month to recover from their concussion. You need to be cleared by a healthcare professional before you can return to play, not by the guy in the stands waving a misspelled defense sign. And travel with championships! Also, your team already lost. Ah. You lost so bad. Okay. Just a bunch of losers. I, I get it. So, to sum up, concussions won't ruin your life and you shouldn't refrain from physical activity just to avoid the risk of them. However, concussions can lead to short-term health issues, which require customized treatment and the approval of a healthcare professional to retake the field. Got it? Who, who are you talking to? Don't worry about it, Tommy. Okay, but for real, my name is...